Hey, what's going on YouTube? I've been wanting to make this video for a while. That classic string synthesizer sound is used in so many different styles of music, works in so many different genres. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create it in about 30 seconds and all the different things you can do with it. In this video, I'm using Ableton Meld. I've been making videos recently about this synth. It's the latest one from Ableton. It's amazing. It's one of the coolest synthesizers I've heard in a long time. It really doesn't matter what synthesizer you're using for these videos because the concepts I'll show you can apply to really any polyphonic synth. You could be in a totally different DAW. You could be using Citrus in FL Studio or Alchemy in Logic Pro. It really doesn't matter. You could be on a hardware synth. You could still make this patch just fine. Um, it's basically some very simple concepts. So if we go over here to Meld and we look down at the amp envelope, you know, the amp envelope is a big part of how we make different patches and synthesizers. And I've made a previous video about this topic. You can check it out. I'll link it right now, which is really good for kind of getting you started making your own patches and kind of exploring your own sound design. But anyway, right here in the amp envelope, this decides really the nature of the sound. So, you know, if we want to have sort of a string synthesizer, I kind of go for these settings in the ADSR. So attack, decay, sustain, release. And you can see it's one second, eight seconds, a little bit lower sustain, not super loud, and then three seconds on the release. But yeah, those are basically the settings that I'm using. The second step is the modulation envelope. That's going to do something different. That's going to affect the filter, which is going to give us that nice filter sweep sound that we recognize makes it sound like a classic string synthesizer patch. So basically these settings you can use right here, you'll notice it's kind of more of a blade shape. And then all we have to do is just tag it to our filters, which are right over here. When I click on them, it highlights it on this big modulation window, which you can expand with that little triangle button right there. So basically any synthesizer you're on, you just want to learn how you can tag a different envelope, a modulation envelope, an extra envelope onto your filter. So right there as that's highlighted, you can see filter frequency and then modulation envelope. And I just turn it up and I do basically the same thing on the other oscillator as well. When it comes to the oscillators, you're basically kind of looking for a square and a saw kind of the two shapes that kind of blend well together to get a more classic sound. Obviously with Meld, you have these really wild macro oscillators you can play around with. That's going to drastically change the sound, make it sound more modern or different as a synthesizer patch. Down here is the square wave. I turn the shape all the way to the right and then sort of around this area, you're getting into the more of the saw area waveform and then I'm combining them together. So it's basically a three-step process. You know, you have your amp envelope, modulation, tag it to the filters, and then your oscillators. And you're kind of right there. This is a very classic kind of sound that's used in so many different styles of music. You can use it in pop, hip hop, alternative music, EDM, obviously. By the way, you can download this preset that I created. I put it in the link in the description below. It's totally for free. I always put this stuff together on my Patreon for my community. If you want to download it and just throw it into your DAW and try it for yourself or use it as a starting point for customizing your own patches and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're into this content because I do a lot of stuff like this, a lot of music production stuff too. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It does a whole lot to support the work I do on this channel. But yeah, basically, once you have the patch in that place, you can kind of go over to the filter. You could adjust these parameters. You could change out the type of filter you're using. Just going to give you a lot of different timbres of the sound. But the big thing that really changes it a lot is the filter sweep cue or the resonance on the filter itself. So in the cue area, if I turn these things up to say like 60, something pretty dramatic, I'm probably going to hit the saturation kind of hard when I do this, but it's going to give it a much more dramatic sweep sound. And that's because the resonance on the filter is higher. So it's creating a resonant peak that you can actually see on EQ8 when I hit my chords. Which is pretty cool, right? You also notice that when I do my own patches, I do a lot of EQ8 right after the synthesizer because even though you have these tone knobs, you might have something like that on whatever synth you're using. I tend to find in Ableton, I like to use the corrective EQ to kind of make it more balanced in the frequencies. Just trying to make it a little more mix ready, um, which kind of saves time and makes the patch sound a little cleaner. I'm also using saturator and I'm not using any effects on this, but you could add reverbs and delays to the signal. Another really cool thing you can do is you can tag these parameters 
parameters to how you're playing on the keyboard. So I could take my filter frequency and I could move this up based on pitch. So as I play higher pitches, the filter opens up a little bit more. Same thing can be applied to that resonance idea I was talking about, where you can tag higher amounts of resonance based on a higher pitch on the keyboard. So the higher notes basically sound brighter, more resonant and more dramatic. And then maybe we'll tune these back down something like 40. And so when I play higher on the keyboard, you'll get higher resonant peaks. So a nice low chord. The other big thing that you can do is then adjust the decay on the modulation envelope itself. This is going to have a huge effect on the sound because it's going to basically slow down that filter sweep. So if I go to something like eight seconds, you'll notice. It's a much slower, more ambient sounding kind of filter sweep, which is really useful because if you have a slower track, you might want to change that decay time on the modulation envelope. Another cool thing you can do with the decay on the modulation envelope is tag it to the pitch as well. So it's very performative. So if I stay around like one second here by turn it up right here, you know, this is a huge modulation matrix, but they want to give you all these options for a reason. So if I play a higher pitch, that decay time is going to increase, which can again can have a very dramatic effect on this sound, really taking advantage of having a polyphonic synth where the voices are independent based on your performance. That real slow sweep coming down. And probably one other trick I definitely would want to add to this is if you're someone that's still playing triads on your keyboard or writing them into your piano roll and you want to get thicker, bigger chord sounds, you can actually just go to one of your oscillators and tune it up seven semitones. Now that's a perfect fifth interval. And what that does to the triad is it naturally creates a major triad, turns into like a major ninth triad. A minor triad will turn into a minor ninth triad. So you just get this beautiful lush sound that you can create with. And uh, yeah, it really comes in handy if you're trying to create a bigger sound. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for me in this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, especially if you're new here. You would not believe how much it supports the channel just by hitting those two buttons. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to download this patch, it's down below in the link. I made a bunch of other patches as well for my Patreon members. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun making music.